think it's the 31st of August. <clears throat> The church sent an offering on behalf of uh, the congregation as well. This morning, and God bless every one of you again, um, I bring you greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And today I want to talk, talk to you a little bit about our thought life, how we think, how we're able to cap capture those thoughts that are not uh, things that we should think about. All of us, have, all of us face this type of issue. Uh, God wants our thought life. Uh, he wants our thought life to be sound in the Lord. So I'll give you scripture and verse. Uh, 2 Timothy, the first chapter, verse 7, the very common and familiar scripture that we're all familiar with. For God had not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So the Bible wants us to have a sound mind. Obviously, any area of fear a lack of power and a lack of love is going to affect the conclusion of that statement, a sound mind. And you'll notice that your sound mind and your will are, are synonymous. You have to set your will to do what God has called you to do. If it's not set in stone, set in your heart, then something is not sound in your walk. Our minds must take on, first and foremost, the mind of Christ. We have scriptures from Philippians 2.5 that says, let this mind be in you, which was in also in Christ Jesus. So our example is Jesus. He is our example of a sound mind. So today God wants our thought life. Everyone feel, deals with the thoughts. And today we will cover it from conception all the way to our present state, our present age. We won't be long today. Uh, and we know that many of the uh, congregation works, and so this uh, teaching probably will be available on YouTube and, and other venues. <laughs> when you read, uh, let this mind be in you in Philippians 2, 5, which was also in Christ Jesus, you kind of ask yourself the question, how is this commandment possible if our thought life is unproductive? Well, <laughs> if our thought life is, is unproductive, that means we're having issues with our thought life. All right, so it gets out of control, perhaps, in some people. Uh, some people have racing thoughts, uh, continually thinking about evil, about yourself. Uh, they even, I've heard testimonies where even thinking that God is not pleased with them. So these and many other lies are the seeds uh, that the enemy sees into our thought life, into our inner man by Satan. The flesh does this as well. The flesh is the enemy of God. It will never submit to the Holy Spirit. The flesh, the old nature, Pastor Paris or Apostle Paris used to say he called it the gorilla. He is the gorilla in the temple, all right? And he's always going to be there, but he's supposed to stay dead. He's supposed to stay crucified according to what Jesus has done in Calvary's cross. According to Romans, the sixth chapter, it says, reckon your old nature crucified. Keep it dead. So when that nature want to come up, say no. So you have to set your will. So today, I guess we're talking about the heart, but we're talking about your will, too, because a lot of us have a heart to do something, but our will won't let us do it right. Satan began placing many of these keyword mind control spirits in our inner man since conception for some people. Most of us didn't have a godly fearing upbringing. Some of us were born in Christian families. Some of us didn't have a godly covering. Instead, we were open to many heartbreaking issues that came in our, our life, and we didn't have any known solutions or ways to heal our broken hearts. I turned to my uh, my, my tar soldiers, I had tar soldiers as a boy, I remember that very clearly, I had train sets as a boy, so I turned to that in my pain because I didn't know you could turn to God. I would assume my sisters turned to their dolls and so forth. <laughs> That's how we all, whenever mom and dad was getting into it, or whatever the situation may have been, I don't remember a lot of that, but you know, that kind of be what we're going to talk about today. A lot of that is buried, and we live in their life because we haven't forgiven them. We eventually buried these issues, we forgotten them, and then another key keyword, block memory spirits came along, and they've been hiding them until the day. So you're dealing with mind control that's trying to control the mind. Control, when they control your mind, they can control your behavior, keep you always in a backslidden mode, even though you're living fully for Christ, but you don't, your actions don't, and your works don't line up with the faith in God. You always can say, I don't know why I did, I, I'm, whatever the situation is, I don't know. I know we all, we all deal with it, and, but I got some good news. I got the plan that God has for us today to get free, amen? And so God desires to dig these things, these issues up in our lives so that we can become free. 
and that we can serve in his kingdom with liberty and, and serve free. Uh, in Jeremiah, the ninth chapter, I'm going to read uh, verses 9 and 10. Let's see, Jeremiah, very important scripture. It says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I know. <laughs> the Bible says in verse 10, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. Now, the fruit of his doing is the action, because everything, all sin, it comes from the thought. It came from the heart. And when it's conceived, it brings forth action, sin, right? Y'all know that from James, the first chapter, second chapter. James, we're reading all of that. And so in here in Jeremiah 9 and 10, there's two passages of Scripture. God identifies two, two, two things, the heart and, and the kidneys. Now, the reason why I say kidneys is because reins in the Bible have two definitions. In some areas of the Bible, the reins speak of uh, your heart, okay, your thoughts and, and your inner man. And then other areas of the Bible, the reins speak of really what it's defined as in the natural, your kidneys. So everything in the Bible has a natural and a spiritual significance, all right? And Paul used natural significance when he said, you can't say to the hand you don't have no need of thee. Or the eye you have no, and you can't see or whatever. <laughs> all right, because we're all in the body, and God has put all these members together to form the body. He wasn't talking about just making me and you as a physical body. He's talking about the church coming together with all the gifts of the Spirit. So we know there's natural and there's a spiritual meaning to the definitions when we read them in the Bible. The, the, <laughs> the blood is circulated through our bodies through the, 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 the kidneys. Uh, uh, and so we have to understand that there's a, uh, all of the issues flow from the heart, and the heart pumps the blood to the kidneys, all right? And so God's word and God's spirit heal our hearts. Let me cover some more of this, make sure we're clear on this. Your kidneys remove waste and extra fluid from your body. Why did God mention the kidneys in this passage of Scripture? Why well, wasn't he just say heart and heart? He said heart and reins. He was talking about the kidneys. We have two kidneys that filter our blood, removing waste and extra water to make urine. And just like the heart that is hardened towards God, a heart that's not doing what God is telling it to do, um, not soft to the things of God and the word of God, could this be a possible cause of kidney issues? The kidney acts as a filter, and when God's truth is rejected, not allowed to pass within or with through your body, like the blood flows from the heart to the kidneys and throughout the reins of the body. Could this be a possible reason for blockages or failure of the kidney? I don't know. Uh, but certainly there have been those who have testified as so because they got deliverance. Now today, the Holy Spirit will search us and reveal the conditions of our heart when we, uh, and when we practice living a lifestyle of repentance. And trust me, it is very broad. When you have a heart issue or when you have a head issue, they are totally different in definition. A head issue is like, it doesn't even bother you. It doesn't even, it does, it's like water off the duck back, as they say. It doesn't even, it's nothing. But when something gets you and it really strangles a hold and it really restrains you and it's trying to dominate how you feel your emotions, but that's a heart issue. God said, I want to heal that heart issue so you can flow freely. You may still not do what you didn't want to do, but at least you won't have any resistance inside of you saying, don't do it. You made a choice. I'm not going to do it. So God wants to heal that inside of us. And so there will be tests that's going to come in your lives and, uh, that you might understand where you, are God, uh, where you are with God in your hearts. And so you might, you know, so that you can know if your works are producing good works, righteous works, or evil fruit. Now, when God sends the test to us, the test of our hearts, it's not to prove that to us, uh, uh, that God can see our hearts and all this. That's not what he's trying to do. He's trying to get you to see that you got some issues you need to deal with because he loves you uh, unconditionally. God loves us unconditionally. The natural state of our hearts is sinful, deceitful, but God wants to change our hearts, and he is willing to do so for those who seek him. So we have to be seekers of God. God will change our heart in a variety of ways, and for, uh, for those whose hearts are changed, there will be evidence of such a heart change. Uh, for some, the change is immediate when God does a work, uh, like when you were born again. And so when you became born again, it was an instant change of your heart, and, you, and it, it resonates with you even to this day. And so 
there have been some things that I've been working with. Everything I work with God most of the time is a heart issue. Uh, it's always dealing with the, the, inner man, the inner man. I mean, that's just, just where I'm at with God all the time. I take no, um, I've always been this way that I can remember being in the Lord, even to the point where I remember Brother Ted Rush way back in the day used to say, you're just really too hard on yourself. I mean, you just bury everything trying to find out what the problem is. I, I say, I just, I'm all in. I just, that's all I know. I said, that's all the way I know how to serve God. He would just laugh. He said, Jim, one time he gave me the scripture where Paul wrote, you have no right to judge another man's servant. Well, he was right about that. I had to make sure that my judgment wasn't an inappropriate judgment because we don't have a right to judge another man's servant, even me, because I am the servant of God. <laughs> so I made sure, Taylor was making sure you got to balance. But you're doing it right. Just make sure you balance. <laughs> in Proverbs, the, um, the 20th chapter, very important scripture here in Proverbs, I'm going to read. Uh, excuse me, not the 20th chapter, chapter 4, but it is verse 20. It will be verse 20. Proverbs, the chapter 4, verse 20. Very familiar passage of scriptures again. And it reads, My son, attend to my words. Incline your ear unto what I say, to my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart, and this is our key verse, with all diligence. That means you got to be diligent about this thing. You can't be passive, just kind of letting it go. For out of it are the issues of life. The word of God is our life and health, naturally and spiritually. The greatest of all health to us is to have our soul restored because within us is life eternal. God is concerned about the soul. Otherwise, we wouldn't have had Peter put upside down, uh, John killed, <laughs> James murdered, <laughs> thousands of Christians killed by the, uh, the, 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 the Greek gods and uh, Nero hanging up on stakes and burning them in fire, making them lamps in the city in Rome. So we have to understand, first, God is looking at spiritual. He wants to let us know he's given us eternal life. So are you a living sacrifice? Most people can't live to be a living sacrifice. They live so they can be comfortable. <laughs> the Bible says, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. So think about it. How many Christians have been taught to turn to God when they're going through a battle? Well, we all told, you know, it doesn't matter where we are, denomination, non-denomination, fundamentalists, oh, and I can name several others uh, that are professed to be Christians, but basically everyone t tells us to go to the Word, but are we taught how to go into the Word? H are we taught how to apply it? How many understand and truly understand that, that God would re actually remove the entire root cause of their spiritual issues? Because we've been taught to maintain, to medicate, uh, to go to the gym, uh, you can't never do away with it. What's it, what's going to happen to happen? Bear with it. Live with it. Move on. So, that's not God's remedy for issues in our heart. God removes the root. <laughs> that's all, that ought to be an exciting, that ought to be like a praise God. <laughs> well, I just had my praise God moment, okay? <laughs> so y'all forgive me. And so he removes the root, and the root cause of heart issues. And very few uh, people have that experience. Many are taught to be satisfied with an emotional experience, get a little peace, a conditional, what we call a temporary bandage. Many live separated from society, they live separated from peoples, and sometimes uh, their rejections cause them to be so separated even from themselves and, and cause them to even reject God, even though they don't know they're not rejecting God, because they're not rejecting his truth, so they're living a lie. So when, you re when you're rejecting God, you reject, you're, you're living a lie, even though you say, I'm a believer. It won't stop you from going to heaven, but it sure will make life most difficult for you on earth. All right? Because God gave his son, Jesus, his blood has cleansed us. We are in a blood covenant. We're born again. I mean, you've got to fight, I mean, completely opposite of what God wants you to do not to make it. All right? God's grace is sufficient. And most, most churches have figured that part out. But there are some things that can cause us to go. All right? Uh, and we're not covering that today, but I think it's something to explore. Believers must earnestly seek to know how or what God's word has to say about their issues, how he feels, what he thinks about the situations they are facing, the issues occurring in their lives, and not assume anything. Uh, my or attache has come from our senior apostle, uh, Glenn Miller, 
Brother Jim, what's your scripture and verse? <laughs> Give me the word. And he never said that to me in any kind of dumb way, academic way. He just was, he would always encourage me. I'd be saying, like, we're going to buy so-and-so. Jim, scripture and verse, find it. <laughs> it's in there. <laughs> All right. So after you read uh, Proverbs 4.20, as we read a while ago about the issues, it should be clear that God wants to deliver us, not superficially. He's not a surface God. He's not just skimming off the top. He's not water skiing, or water skiing uh, with, with our souls. But he wants to go into the depths of our souls and our hearts. But if we don't allow him in, he's not, he can't come in on his own. He, he'll do that for our salvation because salvation is under a different principle and a precept in God's word. God so loved the world <laughs> that he gave his only begotten son. But you got to love yourself, as the Bible says, Jesus said, and your enemy as you love yourself for him to be able to go into the, to the dark sides of your, your heart. You have to do it. You can't just say, oh, he'll do it when he's ready. No, that's not going to happen like that. you just leave out here like that. You know, you'll go to heaven, but I mean, it's such a, a miserable life to live, to, leave in a chamber, in a, to live in the chambers of darkness of your heart. So God wants you free. My point is, he wants you free. And many of you are going to get free today. The success or failure of your battles you face, past or present, will be determined by the condition of your heart and your will to receive. So we have to set our will. Uh, there's certain things that we set our will for. I, you know, like uh, three or four months ago, I was thinking about buying another vehicle. Well, I set my will here recently. I'm not, not going to do it until uh, later. All right? I was about getting ready to get another uh, home. I said, well, I set my will back then. I'm not going to do that for, for right now. I want to make sure that, that I'm not doing things to try to, uh, uh, um, how can I say, uh, candy any wounds or superficially uh, do something in order to appease my flesh because I might be still part of the grieving process. Uh, but I'm going to make some legitimate decisions uh, from this point on and in months to come. Uh, but they'll be rational and they will have, uh, they will have foundational pr premise for and reason for doing it. And uh, uh, I will not be the only one that will prosper out of it. Uh, selfishness is always independent of God. And, uh, and it all, all it does is try to appease self. So that would not be my decision. We'll never be sitting around that. So we have to think about our thoughts, our attitudes, our desires, and intentions flow from the heart. That's where they flow from. You say, well, this blood pumping. No, no, no. The heart is the inner man. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm talking about the spirit man. I'm talking, I'm talking about the, de the dwells of your soul, your will, your heart, your inner man. And Satan and your flesh wants uh, 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 wants you. He wants uh, he wants your heart. Uh, he wants your your will. And when I say Satan and uh, and the flesh, I'm talking about these are our principal foes that are against God, They're against God's creation, the church. We deal with an enemy, Satan and his demons. We also have in us, built in us, our, our nature. And that's the nature that we fight all the time. I'm not gonna think evil. Uh, oh no, he's not against me. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. No, devil, you're not gonna talk to my mind like that. Make me think. My daddy don't love me or my mama. Don't. I mean, just whatever we deal with, okay? Because all you, you're out here listening to this show, and you got a whole variable of issues. Uh, I, I come from a blended family. I had a lot of issues I had to deal with uh, when, I, when God brought me to the cross. And uh, I'm so happy uh, that uh, God showed me that because I could have been a phenomenal, fundamentalist Christian, cake sales, bake sales, rev day anniversary, show up, pay my tithes and often, and went about my life and lived progressively for myself and my family. And I never got a born again experience with God. But one day, he, I got born again. You got to have the Holy Ghost. You got to have the Spirit of God come. You have to ask for it. it. It may not manifest the same way in every person. Eventually, everything that it manifests will manifest through every person. Because when I first got saved, I was saved. I didn't pray in tongues for what, several months. I didn't, you know. You got to know what you, got to, what you can get before you can get it. <laughs> but you got to start somewhere. I say, Lord, fill me with your Spirit. I trust you. And you, that's where you start. You don't say, if I don't speak in tongues, I don't have it. That's ridiculous. But if you say, I'm not going to speak in tongues, then you won't get it, that much of it. You'll just get a little piece of it. Because the Spirit, the Bible says, and the Holy Ghost returned, and they prayed, and they were filled again. So there are agains and agains. And that's refreshing and refreshing in our souls and our minds, too, unless we say. So you got to let the guards down. The heart, some definitions, is the source of thoughts and reasoning. If I just stop for a minute, we'd just be quiet. You, you, you just think for a minute, where we at? Uh, in my case, I have to think, well, I might be a little tired because I was in Houston last night. I haven't done it with several friends. Uh, 
um, from the, uh, the, the Elmores, Russell, that was the nurse at the hospital. Just you have to be, if you want to be friendly, you have to present yourself friendly. So I make those sacrifices. I call him. I said, "Look, I'm going over there. We're going to have dinner." All right? Okay. All right. I, mean, I had a lot going on this week, but you, you have to make the sacrifices as Christians to show people appreciation, to show them love, uh, to spend some time with them. You can't live in seclusion. That's how I lived when I was a paranoid schizophrenic, and I was, trust me. Uh, and so we have to deal with those thoughts and reason that gives all kinds of excuses why we won't have fellowship and won't do things. So I counted a, a joy to be able to uh, make the sacrifice and drive hundreds of miles for a 45-minute meal. The heart represents our inner being, and out of the heart flow our thoughts. And Solomon wrote, and this is real, real good with him, Proverbs the 27, chapter, verse 19. You might want to just make a note of this. is a very powerful scripture. It's very short. It's, it's a little longer than Jesus wept, but it's a good one. All right? Solomon wrote in Psalms 27, 19, as in water, face, answer it to face. So the heart of man to man. Now, let's define that. Water is a picture of having a reflection. Many of you jumped in the pool or in the bathtub, you can see a reflection in the water. It's like a mirror of our souls is being considered here by Solomon. In other words, our thought lies reveal what is in our heart. So when you look in that mirror, you should be able to see what's in your heart. All right? not, not so much you, but God wants you to know he's mirroring your soul. So what are you seeing? Are you seeing me? Because if you're seeing you, then you're not seeing me. As in water, face answered the face, so the heart of man to man. God wants that heart to face God. Psalm, a proverb, excuse me, 27, 19. And so if we want to change our thinking, we need first to deal with our hearts. Now, I was in marketing for 20 years, possibly, 20. 17 that I can think of right in my mind right now. Um, uh, 85, yeah, 17 years minimum. So I was in marketing starting in Houston, Texas, years ago. And there were a lot of professed Christians that had motivational seminars uh, taught on how to be positive. And so these tapes were loaded up on us. Uh, and I remember after I got born again, I was working at Midlife, and the God began to protect my heart. And he began to reveal to me just think about what's being said here. There's, there's a measure of things here being said that's true, but there's a measure of things here that, that's provocative. That's, that's not with me. And so I just started putting things away. I didn't have a large circle of friends, so I couldn't go say, God told me this is not wrong. God told me this is wrong. God told me. I didn't. So I just, all that was just my experience, and it didn't play out until this hour or whenever I've taught on mind control spirits in the past. All right? And so some things, some experiences we have to wait and test the testimony that God has given us when he gives us a victory. And don't be so quick on Sunday mornings to stand up and say, God set me free last night, and then you're all messed up and have backslidden a month later because you're still working through that issue. And so rarely will I testify until I didn't got the victory. I got it up front when I got it. But sometimes God is working in my spiritual garden, and there are issues that deal with my tongue, my thoughts, my emotional feeling, my perception, and all that was part of that one misrepresentation of God, it was part of my sin life, a certain area that he was dealing with. He might have only been dealing with the tongue, but he said it, but it came from your mind. And when, then, then you had an emotion come up that made you want to say it, right? And so when you, when, you, when you lay your heart before God, I'm telling you people, he will reveal all those things and you just feel his love because he's showing you, I'm, I'm, I'm canceling all that. <laughs> I'm canceling all that. I'm showing you something. And I'm going to be honest about it. I've always been that way, but I've strayed in times because I've been so focused on ministry, focused on things that I do. Uh, but I know this, and I know these truths, and I'm so thankful that God revealed these truths. Now, in Genesis, the sixth chapter, a very important scripture here, because God saw that the man, evil was so bad, he just destroyed the humanity, except for Noah and, and the souls that came with Noah. So in Genesis, the sixth chapter, verses uh, 5 through 8, the Bible says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continued. Can you imagine what that would be? Like, we see it sometimes on a TV, uh, riotous behavior, kicking, prejudice. They, the prejudice, the people that was prejudiced against or were, were bitter and, and prejudice was against them is decided they're going to take revenge and they're going to be prejudiced against them now. 
<laughs> and so we're seeing all this chaos and tearing up buildings over the last 10 or 12 years. And, uh, and we, but, you know, yet and still God's got a witness here in England and France and all throughout the world. God, is, he even got a witness in Tehran and the Muslims over there. The, the Allah told you all up, they find you with a Bible, they want to kill you. You don't want to be caught with no Bible in, in, in North Korea. They don't even want to find a scripture. They don't even want, they're going to censor you if, you if they can see you on the internet talk, uh, trying to read a Bible. So God is protecting all these people. And my prayer, of course, is for them all days, every day. I just can't pray for uh, the church around the country without thinking about all those that, uh, that are being, uh, that have to duck and dodge uh, like the early disciples did. Uh, because of the things that are going on in the world, and Satan is trying to rule those kingdoms. So, but God saw all this was, was continually, and it repented the Lord that he made man on the earth, and he grieved him in his heart. We're talking about the, uh, the flood here. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. But, and I like, I like this but, it says, but Noah, Noah and his sons, his family, found grace in the eyes of the Lord. God is so graceful. He's so full of mercy, people. We need to see God that way, graceful and merciful. He always has a plan for everything he does. As a reason. People get saved. Uh, things that happen in their life, they change. They become Christians, people that you will never know about. You'll meet them in heaven. You know, you, know, you just don't know why God will do or something. When we say, for God, I live, for God, I die, you need to understand that sacrifice reaches beyond your comfort zone. You just don't know. And I've, been so, I've seen so many things. I've been around so many people over the years that says things. Well, such and such and says so-and-so, and that's how I got saved. What? And that was like eight years ago. Uh, I had something like that. It wasn't even at a church service. It's something you say at a store market. About have you been to church? What about, you know, you know, well, you changed, haven't you? And then you see them five years later. Now they say, fear, fear, you know, all that. <laughs> you, know, you don't know what God is doing. All right, so. The good news here in this passage of scripture is, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. In Christ Jesus, more so than like Noah, God has provided each of you grace in the eyes of the Lord. But you got to believe it. I believe this thing. Genesis 6, 5 declares that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. Our natural tendency is to think sinful thoughts. That's the natural tendency, not the, not the Christian in us. So from our childhood to presently, words have pierced our souls. Most of them were, were not godly. Let's just be honest about it. Uh, a lot of things that, that, that pierced the souls and the thoughts are, are put imprints in our hearts so that we would think evil and be subject to evil things came from family, came from teachers, some coaches, and not all teachers, by the way, not all family, <laughs> amen. Let me get that clear right now. Uh, uh, bad company. The Bible says evil communication or bad company destroy good morals. So you got to be careful who you hang with. You got to you got to even be careful who you hang with, even on the TV and radio. I'll cover that too. Um, so that's TV, radio, music, and more is being used to see bad thoughts into our minds. They're even doing it today by the, some of the foods. So we have to be very careful. We have to be very careful in, in many nations. Um, we have to guard our hearts in order to control our thoughts. The only way you have a guard for your heart is that you gotta put the word in your heart. You gotta stand on the word. You gotta take whatever you know, and you, and you say, well, I don't know a lot. Well, you gotta take the, the little bit you got, and you gotta believe it. You gotta hold fast to that. All right, there's people that have been delivered because all they had was one, one or two scriptures they remember, and they stood on that. Y'all see it on the TVs and the movies, on Christian movies. That's all they had. They said, well, I didn't have nothing else because I ain't had no Bible. <laughs> People come out of China and different places. Nora Lamb had a fine squad on her. Y'all remember Nora Lamb? Uh, they, 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 they hated her for preaching the gospel in China. We're talking about 50 years ago. And Nora, was, they put a fine squad up there. They all, locked, the, the commander locked, locked the guns on them, said, shoot. And they fired, right? Carol, what happened? All the bullets missed. They said, let her go. Let her go. <laughs> I guarantee you, if she'd have been up there like that shaking, she probably wouldn't have made it. She probably would have found another testimony because he wanted to make sure he was glorified. Man. Whew, God is so good. The Bible stresses the importance of guarding our hearts because thoughts flow from the heart. Uh, 
Guarding our hearts involves being careful about what we allow into our minds uh, and, and uh, our ears and our, our eyes. Uh, Psalms 101, uh, verse 3, is a good scripture to, to uh, I, I tend to go there all the time because I fast more than food from time to time. I fast different programs. I find fast TV period or I fast different shows because all those thoughts are, are, are going to try to form a basis for me maybe to add to the message. And God said, don't add to the message but what I give you. So I'm, a, I'm permitted by my will to, uh, and his grace to, to be aware of what's going on around the world through TV, radio, stuff like that's fine. But what I do with it, uh, it needs to be censored by the Holy Spirit. Amen? <clears throat> the Bible says in Psalms 101, 3, say, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. So we don't want soul ties, cleave, clave, bind, unite, or, or words to describe the soul being united with the wicked here. And we're supposed to hate that turn aside from it, so we have to be very careful that we don't put no wicked thing. That's why we mostly tell people, grown and young, don't watch uh, too many, uh, uh, or probably should, I'll just make this for the, for the biblical perspective, don't watch horror movies, because everybody is not, is not built to be able to contain a horror movie. All right? I remember when I, before I was saved, I was at a house with some friends, and they were watching the Exodus, and I came in, I sit down, the boy, he must have been about 12 or eight, 8 or 12 years of age, and that Exodus people had him so scared, he hit the floor and he screamed. He almost passed out. He couldn't stop screaming. He couldn't stop controlling. He, there was nothing they could do to stop it. I didn't even know their family next door was all Holy Ghost filled people. <laughs> and so none of them, none of the young people I was with, we was all, I, was a, I was at least 20. All right, none, of, none of those in there said, I buy you in the name of Jesus, grabbed him and hugged him and loved him. No, nobody. They just let him go. Ah! He, I mean, he went on and on. And finally, I just shook him. Because I saw that in a movie. <laughs> I'm serious. I think I might even, I might have did more than that. I might have, I don't know, because that's all you see in the movie. You know? uh, but anyway, but later on, I found out all of them were saved. Because when I got saved, I said, well, that's my friend. They're all mom and daddy speaking tongues. They were there. Oh, God. But I didn't think about that. I don't think at that time. I was just glad to know they were saved. Came from the same family, too. And today, they saved and got ministries here in the city. And so, so Psalms 101 tells us to, you know, be careful of the TV God. It's okay to have some entertainment and watch some things, be aware of what's going on, some, some educational things. Uh, but there are negative things that you can witness uh, uh, from the television, so you have to be careful. And then there are things that we see as children, fights. Uh, we see car accidents. We see abuse. Uh, we hear in our ears abuse language. All right? And so those things have, have they, they will pierce the, the soul, the heart particularly of the unredeemed. All right, and you know, so we, we, nobody would deny that. I don't think even the secular society that don't know Christ would deny what I just said. Philippians 4.8 uh, is, is a filter for our thoughts. It's one that I, I refer to often in my own personal life. I'm going to read it from a different translation, Philippians 4.8. Finally, brethren and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, Whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent and praiseworthy, think about such things. Now, your Philippians uh, scripture may say it in a different translation, the King James translation. So God is telling us here, let this mind be in you what was also in Christ Jesus. And so we need to think like he thinks. And God loves us. I like what Bill said at the conference in his classroom, or he said it openly before everybody. Uh, when he was testifying, because he hits the streets of Philadelphia. Philadelphia is not no place to play. I mean, it's a hard nature to come out of there. People come out of Philly out of a hard nature. We saw that when the Astros was winning the World Series, and they went up there to play for the World Series, and they wouldn't even serve them food. So they had to bring in their own trucks and airlines, fly in the food, because the Philadelphia restaurants wouldn't even feed the Astros when they won the last pennant two years ago, about three years ago. They won three of them, I think, three or four. So that, everybody knew that it was all new. They just thought it wasn't nothing. I just said, that's just, that's just what they is. They sport people, you know. So nobody saw it. But I saw the spiritual aspects of what was going on, bigotry and hatred. And it's bad because the devil did that on purpose years ago. Why? Because the Constitution, many of our forefathers that wrote the things that the bylaws and the, against the lawless was formed there. Philadelphia is called the city of brotherly love. And when the Pope goes somewhere, he always go to Philadelphia, and he'll go to Harrisburg. And Harrisburg is the capital of Pennsylvania. And that's why I like going there every year, and I'll be there a few months, Lord willing, set my foot on that ground. 
I didn't even start naming the streets and memorizing how all this was formed on the Culberson Highway. I mean, I just I got into it, all right, but it ain't got into me. I just wanted to know what they was thinking about. Uh, how was God able to give them this? Because every nation out there um, envy our, our strategic system. And they want us to go back into Marxism and socialism. That's really what they want us to be. They want us to be able to, to crash. Even when, in, in Mao, he did that uh, in China. He did everything. So everybody's going to have the same. Everybody's going to have this. When that happened, China collapsed. So it doesn't work. And so we have to put our mind on the things of God and understand what God would, and, and let the mind of Christ be inside of us. Believers must therefore make a conscious choice with their wills to align their thought patterns in the spirit rather than instinctively dependent on fleshly desires. Jesus made it very clear. I come to do the will of my Father. So you, so you have a will. Uh, you, you have a will not to eat black pepper? Or oh, to eat black pepper. You have a will that I'm not going to eat this kind of food no more. It's not good for my body. You set your will. All right? We do it on so many other things in our life. You know, we set our wills. So God says, I'm measuring, and I'm looking at your will as it sets for your works for my kingdom. I'm looking at that. God's interested in that. You must become vulnerable to, 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 to set your will and have your hearts inspected uh, by the Holy Spirit. You have to be vulnerable. You can't be you the man or you the woman. No. For many, this is very difficult because for most of their lives, they've practiced hiding their hearts. They're, they've been taught to hide your feelings when you go in there. Don't you act like that. So we've been taught to hide our hearts, hide our feelings from others. But when you open your heart to God for inspection, you be, have to become vulnerable. And another word would be defenseless. <laughs> me, oh, me, oh, Lord, standing in the need. And you can't just take the first victory he gives you because God may want to give you the natural side of it, the spiritual side, the emotional side, Way into you when you first started practicing this. Forgive your mom and daddy because they did this. He may want to work in all those uh, departments, criminalize your understanding, break it down so when a strong man go into the house or the palace, he can begin to fall that furniture. But we'd be so happy just for the quick fix, we'd leave the rest of it on the table. Then we face it eight years later. Five years later, we face it. A year later, we face it. And we don't remember the part he did over here. Because he was saying, I was going to do this, do this, then I was going to do this, and I was going to do this. But you just yielded to the first hit. Man, you got to be vulnerable. you got to be defenseless. Daniel 22 says, well, God knows all about the heart. The Bible said he revealed it, the deep and the secret things. But he can't reveal it to a hardened heart. He can only reveal it to those who, who want to know about the darkness. <laughs> he, he revealed it the deep and secret thing. He knows what is in the darkness and the light dwelling with him. So God wants to set that light in our lives. And so he doesn't want us to mitigate when he's working with us. He wants us to open and allow, allow our gates, doors to open to our heart so they can fully inspect the heart and not just claim victory at the first, uh, 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 the first uh, uh, ground that is gained in your walk uh, uh, that God has given you. He wants you to understand he wants you to take the nation. You are the nation. You're, you're the church. Uh, you're the body of Christ. And uh, so he wants to take everything inside of us and work with us. So you must become defensiveless, vulnerable to your maker. He, des he, he desires to deliver us from all of the satanic protective issues and, uh, in our hearts and our men and memories. Uh, he doesn't want us to bear it. Um, my prayer is, heal me, O Lord. Jeremiah 17, 14, I believe. And I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for you are my praise. We must become vulnerable. The greatest thing that happens to me at this juncture of my walk, and it's been like this for several years, by the way, the many different titles that people say I might have, it don't matter to me because I still see myself so small in my own eyes. I'm just a child of God. I do the thing that God's called me to do, then I face the same things you face too. You know, I cast down imaginations. I bind the strongholds. I break curses. I live the life. I study to, to be approved. I'm, I'm just the same person when, when, that, when you put on a hat, you use a hat. Okay? And so all those things in my life, I pray that God has continued to use me and open the doors in my heart that he be able to do, do an inspection and that I'm willing to allow him to do that inspection.
Lord Jesus, this morning, this day of the Lord, August the 25th, the year of our Lord, 2024, we come boldly to your throne of grace to ask for your wall of fire, your blood covering, your shield of faith, your hedge of thorns to be over and around this property, all of us that are present, uh, our, our immediate, our extended families, members, wherever they may be, and their personal properties. And Lord, we ask you to send a host of the uh, protective uh, and warring and restraining ministering angels uh, to fill this place overflowing. Um, we pray, God, to the angels will link themselves um, round about this property, seal it off with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. All access to which Satan and his cohorts can draw strength. So in Jesus' name, I bind all the prince and powers of the air assigned to everyone in this room, everyone that will be participating through the, the venue of, of media. I bind all the princes of the power of the air assigned to everyone and cut off all lines of communication in every area of our minds. And I cancel their assignments to us this day in Jesus' name. I also declare by the word of God, the full arm of God that we might be able to stand against the fiery darts of the wicked. In Jesus' name, I now ask for the full power and anointing of the Holy Spirit to be loosed on this gathering and all that participate so that the gifts can work through us diversely, diversely as you see fit, God. We just release, Lord, your gifts, discernment, word of knowledge, words of wisdom, discerning of spirits, miracles, faith, all the powers of God that are available to us through your word, these that we know of, those that we don't know of. Uh, Matthew 12, 29 says we must first bind the strong man. These, these um, demons have been assigned against our hearts. And then we can spoil his goods. So in Jesus' name, we, I take authority and I bind the strong man of all ruling spirits, fear, doubt, disbelief, violence, fighting, murder, rage, anger, and hostility. I bind the strong men of error, antichrist, and religious spirits. I bind all divination, witchcraft, witchcraft control, mind control, occult mind control spirits, all unclean spirits, and all of the doorkeeper spirits that were assigned to our hearts. Memory, block memory, mind control, and others, all the familiar spirits, family familiar spirits, and their spiritual guides. In Jesus' name, you're bound. In Jesus' name, Satan, we're attacking you from our spiritual position in the third heaven, where we're seated spiritually in Christ Jesus in heavenly places, far above all principalities, mights, and dominions, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil, and he's given us, the believers, that very same power and authority. Jesus said he came he gave us power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall hurt or harm us, Luke 10, 19. So I now exercise that power and authority that has been given to us, and today we stand in agreement. We come against the powers of darkness by the blood of the Lamb, the name of Jesus, the authority as a believer, the unity of our spirits, the word of God. So in Jesus' name, I bind all the strong men, commanders of legions, ruler demons, lesser demons, Servant demons, all of the underlying spirits, all co-hosts, all doorkeeper demons that are harassing all of us and keeping us in a bondage state. I bind all of the powers and command all of the spirits, of all of the mind control, the memory spirits, spirits of infirmities affecting kidneys and other parts of the body, broken heartedness, bad Christian habits and works, and demons of passivity. I bind them all in Jesus' name. I bind them in the name of Jesus from Satan and from each other so they can't hang on to each other. I bind them in, in the name of Jesus. And I command all of them to line up in rank and file, start leaving out of us in an orderly fashion, as Jesus said, and hurt them not. Come out of us. I take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. I cut and sever every spirit in the family of mind control, memory spirits, Kidneys and infirmities, brokenheartedness, bad Christian habits and works, demons of passivities, all the demons of sort that have been assigned to the inner man, the hearts of the believers. We are the children of God. 
from Satan and from each other so they cannot hang on to each other for help, comfort, or support. I cut you asunder from every area of our minds, our soul, our emotions, from all of the five senses that we know of, those that are unknown. I cut and sever you from all the muscles, ligaments, tendons, nerves, sinews, and t tissues, from all the vertebrae, the discs, all portions of the spinal cord, from every organ, every limb. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. All of us belong to Jesus. Father, we just thank you for the blood of Jesus that washes us and purges us and purge our consciousness, our unconsciousness, our subconscious mind so that all things in the past can be released. We yield our will and we release those pasts to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will work with us in his timing, not because we want something done like always in Christians yesterday. The Holy Spirit knows when to bring it up and when to deal with it. But we have to first be willing for, to allow him to do this. So, Lord, we bind up and stir up all the power of demons, strong men, ruler demons, in every part of our mind, soul, and body, and throw confusion and weakness into their ranks. I command every demon in the category that we've, that we've called out today and others that were affiliated with today's message that identified certain strategies and deceit of the enemy in the inner heart, uh, to the, we bind them to the, directly to the authority of Jesus Christ and his divine judgment. In Jesus' name, I command every one of you to leave along with all your memories, the scars, the roots, works, nests, and habits, and loose us in every category that God wants to work with us in days to come. Emotional, natural, uh, in secular society, how we handle somebody knocking at the door, how we handle a brother that, that we take offense to in the church, in our thoughts, our wills, our emotions. So all those categories now could be held accountable and submitted to God in his time to work with it as he wish. So in Jesus' name, today, I'm going to take authority over the strong man. We're only going to work with this one family, but all of the demons that I've called out, all of them must go, and all of their family, which is the mind control, memory, spirits, infirmity, broken hardness, bad Christian habits, work, demons of passivity. The command is go in Jesus' name. Today, specifically, we come against that strong man also of memory spirits. All absent-mindedness come out, spirits, Spirits of temporary amnesia, amnesia, come out. Blackout, blackout spirits, come out of us. Blank mind, forgetfulness. Oh, I forgot about that. I, I was going to do it, but I forgot. Come out of us in Jesus' name. Lapse memory, block memory recall. God got things that he wants to recall our attention to. Block memory recollection. Oh, I didn't recall that. Come out of us in Jesus' name. Block godly recall, come out of us. Block memory and godly adolescent recall. Block adult recall, block godly adult recall. Block memory, come out of us. Block normal memory. Sometimes we can have such a bad experience in our lifetime, we can't remember a lot of good things unless it happened at a family reunion or something. We can remember things that contain other people, but we can't remember anything good about ourselves. Unless we got an award or something, it still involves someone else. So you need to, you got to remember, what, did, you, did you have joy? <laughs> All right. Well, my joy was centered around my athletic ability, I guess, and, and, and academia in some areas, uh, journalism and things like that. Um, so there were some, some things there. So I need to go back and look at, did, did I have an experience? My first experience of real peace came when I was about five years old when the Holy Spirit came into my room, and I was sitting in there crying. I was a little boy laying in my bed had bunk beds and then I was in there crying and the peace came and I just stopped crying. And I remember it was no fear, no intimidation, just peace. I, I couldn't even say Lord. So it's good I had that <laughs> because I had a whole lot of hell and stuff later. <laughs> so you got to go back and find that moment because I tell you, we are the result of people that pray for us. But if you go back far enough and you, when you was in the world, you will find that moment of peace. And I couldn't even attribute it to God. I just I'm five years old. Okay. All confused memory. We're almost finished. We're going to do these memory spirits. All confused memory. Come out of us. Failing memory. Because, you know, we got medication for everything now. Today. Even if you don't believe it, they put so much out there, you just think, well, I better go get a physical. I think my memory's going. I mean, it's like a dull moment. Excuse me. <laughs> so they got so much out there. The Bible says in the last days, two principal spirits, and I say this over and over again, 
there will be the hierarchy of the Satan's uh, uh, merge onto the, uh, to, to the, to the, uh, the world, and he's going to affect the church. Otherwise, it won't be a, a great apocalypse. The Bible said there will be a great apocalypse in the last days, a falling away from the word. He's not talking about falling from the word, from the world. You already fell in the world. And so those two principal spirits will be sorcery and rebellion. And so they have a drug for everything. Now, they've got some things that are natural stuff that God has given us and that we can use. There are some other things that don't cause you to be a hallucination. For instance, uh, an aspirin is different than uh, taking a shot of morphine. You see what I'm saying? All right, so, so we have to know, you know the things that God has given us in the last days. All failing memory, come out of us in Jesus' name. Spirit of memory loss, come out of us. I'm telling you, from radio and from TV, I'm not just talking about right now. I'm talking about over our lifetime, okay? There have been things that was placed there to block certain things or to encourage you to go certain directions. All right? Because there were subliminal messages in the 60s, right, Sister Cascale? So, 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 Y'all read about this or heard about that. We was in the movies, and they was putting a subliminal message to make you get up and go buy uh, popcorn and soda water. We learned about it in the 70s, 80s when they discovered that they was placing those messages coming real fast. You couldn't read them with the natural eye, but it was saying, buy popcorn. <laughs> that devil something, huh? Well, you got to understand, technology is much greater today. Mm, okay. All right. All severe memory loss come out of us. Alzheimer's. Is that pronounced that right? Come out of us in Jesus' name. Come out of you in Jesus' name. I cast it out. Spirit of senality. See now. Come out of us. I cast it out of you in Jesus' name. All that memory recall, they want to uh, just want to uh, bring back nothing but the evil past. And you're a Christian today. I break that, uh, that, that memory recall they want to break. And I'll break those ties with the past. When God want to bring something to your memory, he'll bring it. But the devil don't need to bring nothing to you. I command all remembrance of an evil past. And I'll break those, those, those soul ties with the evil past first, though, in Jesus' name. And i break the ties with all the flashbacks of the evil past. A flashback of something that happened in your life. If God want to bring something to your memory, he will bring it when you give your heart to him. At his own time. But there are some things that just manifest in our life we have no control of. We see something happening to them, we have a flashback. We see a car accident, we have a flashback to something happened to our cousin, our nephew. They had, I mean, we attribute everything, A and B, we put it all and make it all equal C. And God may, have, God may not be instituting that flashback. So that's evil memory, that's an evil flashback of evil past that the demon would try to bring on us too. And I rebuke him and command him to go in Jesus' name. All tormented memories, tortured memories, memories, troubled memories, and twisted memories, call, I command you to, to go in Jesus' name. We call you out in Jesus' name. False remnants, come out in Jesus' name. Now all of the mind binding, mind control, mind confusion, confusion, mixed confusion, mass confusion, spirits of a shallow mind, sidetracked mind, bound mind, a fearful mind. I just don't think I can learn that. I don't, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not good at that. You can be good at anything, okay? I like, the devil told me what I couldn't be good at. <laughs> when I got into the high school years, I was the king of the, high, king of the school. I mean, I don't mean nothing. Don't mean nothing. I don't care nothing about that now. Start on, started on a baseball team in the 10th grade. Uh, and, and yet, I get all the way to the end of my class year and failed uh, two uh, semester of English, the easiest stuff. And the teachers looked at me. I'm looking out the window. I'm drifting. The devil had my mind. So then I had to come, and they threatened me to, to keep me back, so then I come back and made the A's in it, the next two, which balanced me out. All right? I'm just trying to tell you, the devil tried to think you got, trying to bring that back on you. All right? And so when I got in the military, all right, I had a different type of discipline. I wanted to do it. And so I said, well, man, they got some, we got to learn math, and we got to learn science. Uh, the, the anatomy of the body, but I said, okay, good thing I had a coach because uh, when I was in, played, uh, Coach Ozan was our health instructor. So I can remember some things he taught us in health school. And so I said, now, I want a party though. I said, okay, so what I'm going to do, I made my mind, I set my will. I wasn't even saved, but I set my will to do this. I say, I'm going to go through the lesson, I'm going to make notes all, because they had all kind of nurses coming and teaching, coming, you know, different courses. As I said, I'm going to do that. I say, I say, I'm going to make notes. I say, when I first get out of my classes at the end of every day, I'm going to go straight to my barracks. I'm going to go over all my notes. I'm going to study my lesson. Then I'm going to get drunk. I'm not telling you. 
I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling y'all, I'm not lying. I partied, got drunk, hung out late, all right, and come back in, and I was excelling. I, 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 was, my, I have my records. I was 13 in the class, in my class. And I'm telling you, all I did was, and then when I was finished, then I went out and partied. <laughs> I'm telling you. So you have to figure out what you, what, what's going to work for you. You understand? You got to find you got to find your pie. And I wasn't even saved, but I was a, a math and none of that. All that there was a, a problem became easy because I set my I set my wheel to, I'm a, and then I had faith and I went on about my business. I man, I excelled those classes, and and I saved all my records because uh, some of that stuff I passed down to the children, uh, but not to show them who I was. But they need to have a history of your, your ancestors when they served God. That's what I'm saying. So you get to hear the, when I was not saved, and then you get to hear as God saved me. So, so what I'm saying is you can do something about tomorrow with Christ in the plan today. But don't let yesterday control your tomorrow. And I refuse to let that happen, and I didn't even know who God was. But God had touched me as a child. All right? So all the time, he was, he was winging me. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. All the time. So all these spirits of uh, uh, shallow mind and sidetracked mind and bound mind come out of us in Jesus' name. Bound infant mind, bound childhood mind, bound adolescent mind, bound adult mind come out of us in Jesus' name. Spirits of preoccupation. I'm just preoccupated with that thought. That thought. I can't get it out of my mind. That's a lie. Get that out of your mind. That's what we had in the scriptures in 2 Corinthians uh, uh, 10, 3 through 5. Cast down all strongholds, imagination, and everything attempted to exalt itself against the mind of Christ. All right, spirit of lack of concentration. Uh, come out of us in Jesus' name. Spirit of Leviathan. There's a demon of Leviathan. It blocks Bible study. It's a constellation spirit. In the book of Job, it talks about four or five constellations. Benamoth, Arturus, Leviathan. These are constellation spirits. They're called rulers. They try to bind us from reading the word of God. They also try to control our thoughts and minds and our decisions. And this is the demons they use when they do major sacrifices, they've been doing that for many years, human and animal sacrifice, and sorcery and divination to control the thoughts of many people. And my thought, my prayer is always for the believers to, to loose our minds from, from demonic and deceptive practices by those who use witchcraft to control the church. I can't pray for believers, unbelievers like that. I only break curses over believers in America, okay? All right, so their minds don't be just, oh, that's the right thing to do, I'll I, I go that direction. So they don't be just dull people and don't even know what's going on. All right, but for the church, for I, mean, I can't do that. I can't ask God to break the curse. I, I, I pray for salvation and, you know, you know, things like that, you know. So I want you to understand, there's some balance there. Almost finished. All fragmented soul spirits come out of us. Command the deeper that keeps, the, uh, the, uh, the keeper of our soul, that demon, come out of us in Jesus' name. All dead brain cells, damaged brain cells, be healed in Jesus' name. All spirits from shock treatments, uh, mental fatigue, mind fatigue. Mental insanity, uh, mental illness, come out of us. That's a lie from the devil. That's a lie. You can change your thought. I just gave you an example of what I did, and I really did that. And I'm telling you, when I say I got drunk, I, 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 my average was a 12-pack and then a fifth of something. Not a fifth of hard liquor, like wine or something. Back in the day, it was Bella High. Um, uh, 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 I forgot the name. Uh, uh, MD 2020. <laughs> Mad Dog is what they call it. Now Snoop Dogg got his own. <laughs> and so, and so, but I was lost. But God had touched me. So even I was lost, God was still holding on to me. He said, I got you. I got, come on, man. I got you. I got you. Just don't do this now. Don't go here. Because I had some things I wouldn't do, you know. And there, there was some things I, I did. It was bad. And so God just had much grace on me. Finally, all nervous breakdown spirits. I'm crashing. I, I just don't know what to do. I'm at the wind of my ear. That nervous breakdown spirit, that's not peace. God said, I give you peace that passes all understanding. My peace, the world can't take away. This nervous demon wants to take it away. Come out. All drifting mind, roving mind, wandering mind, all of the mind control spirits, I command you to come out of us in Jesus' name. Every one of them, come out of us in Jesus' name. Now, the word of God tells me, my God, he says this, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still walls. My scripture. He restored my heart. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Lord, fill us. Your love, your joy, your peace, your goodness, your gentleness, your kindness, your faith. Lord God, your temperance, your long-suffering. God, just fill us today. 
We just thank you for today's message. I thank you more than I, than I give to the congregation because I give you my heart. And I thank you for today. May God bless you. May God keep you. Lord, may we have a wonderful time.